Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing West Side Story. This film came out in 1961. It had two directors. The main director was Robert Weiss and then uh, Jerome Robbins directed the, the musical dance sequences. This is one of those, those very special nostalgic movies for me. I, I have easily seen this movie over 50 times it, it just over the course of my childhood. I, I was in love with it. I wanted to star in it. I know every fucking frame of, of every moment of this movie by memory. It's just the choreography by, by Jerome Robbins and, and the score by the great Leonard Bernstein, you know, it was just, it, it's it's tailor-made for, for somebody like me. But I hadn't seen it all the way through in a long, long time, so I figured I could go back and watch it and be less biased as, as an adult. And this is also a movie I've always just wanted to review over the summer. Don't know why. I think it's very bold and, and very ambitious to make a movie like this because just the music of West Side Story is is very, very difficult. I mean, for any musician who knows, who plays an instrument, if you've played any Bernstein, you know that it's, it's extraordinarily difficult. You have to be on your toes every moment. It's extremely difficult to sing and also to dance as well because of the counting. But it is, of course, a, a classic universal tale. This is basically Romeo and Juliet, but updated for the modern era in New York City. And you have a feud, not between the Montagues and the Capulets, but here you have it between two gangs, the uh, Puerto Rican immigrants who are the sharks and then the the uh, American natives who are the the jets. The opening sequence to this movie is is absolutely spectacular. I mean, it, it's just one of the most brilliant openings to a, a musical that I have ever seen, and that's saying something. I've seen a lot of them. It's like a western. It doesn't even feel like a musical at all. The way that it builds, it starts out with those aerial shots, and it's just really, really quiet, and then you hear slowly the snaps coming in and the whistling, and then of course there's that buildup of the music, and you see, you know, the shots getting closer and closer down to where we finally see it zeroing in on, on the jets. And it does all of this very musically, very rhythmically. You see the zoom where it goes da da da, you know, it does a lot of that. And even when you see the jets, you know, they're snapping at the beginning. And I love how the camera will start on riff and then it reveals more and more. So it's kind of like the, you know, it'll do that and it's like da 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 da. All of those are just little details that to me just add so much to what makes it so so compelling. And and just the whole sequence, I think any person who's a fan of film can absolutely appreciate it because. It sets up everything perfectly. It's it's nothing but really movement and music. There's very, very little dialogue, but yet you don't really need it at all. It's communication through through the art form. And there are a lot of really great musical sequences in this movie, I have to say. I mean, of course, the, the quintet is great in the in the middle of the film before the rumble. I really love the, the cool number towards the end of the film. It moves wonderfully. It's bold and it's, it's powerful. And it feels almost like an action sequence compared to like a dance sequence. You see a lot of swish pans and that dolly shot. I love the addition of the electric guitar in the film version. I know that a lot of the West Side Story purists of the stage musical hate that, but I, I mean, I don't know. I think it's really interesting because it makes it more modern, it makes it more uh, sinister and cool, hence the name. I actually think that the film makes a lot of changes to the original Broadway show that improve on it. For instance, I like that the America number was normally just done by the by the women. And I like that they added the men into it. Just it, it makes everything more dynamic. It makes the the uh, the, com the competitive tension, the sexual tension more palpable, and it just makes it more complex and more interesting. One of the big things, the big changes that I think was crucial was they switched the G officer Krupke number with the cool number. Uh, you know, one, the, the Krupke number used to be in the second half and then cool number in the first half. And that never made sense to me because the, the Krupke number is like this, this comic number, which doesn't really gel with the, the second half, which is so uh, tragic. I like the idea of that cool number being in the second half because it is so gritty and it has that kind of violent nature to it where these characters feel as though they're losing their minds. So they've got to just kind of keep calm and play it cool. And this film just, it has a beautiful beautiful um, look to it, cinematic look. Uh, you know, it came out in the early 60s and by the mid to late 50s to the early 60s, you were seeing dramatic changes in musicals. Uh, the musicals, like the, the MGM musicals of the 50s and of course the ones before that, you know, like RKO from the 30s and the 40s and like Busby Berkeley musicals, those were kind of falling by the wayside by that point. People didn't want the more show musical, uh, Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, type stuff. They wanted more of the pathos. They wanted more of the drama. And that really made sense because the world was growing increasingly more cynical. And I think West Side Story really reflects that. But yeah, the overall look of the film is beautiful. It really pops a lot of vibrant colors when it needs to. And the aesthetic to me is, is pretty spot on to the point where 
I can't, I can't really imagine it being done in any other way. It really does kind of uh, honor the, the stage production well. There are four key players in the film. You've got, of course, the two lovers. You've got Maria and you've got Tony. And then you've got uh, Bernardo, who's basically the, the Mercutio, uh, the head of the Sharks, and then Riff, who is uh, Tony's best friend, the head of the, the Jets. And then you have Anita, who is, of course, everybody's favorite character, including my own. It is extremely clear to me who stands out in this cast uh, and blows everybody out of the water. There are two people in particular. There is Rita Moreno, who plays uh, Anita, and then you've got George Shakiris, who plays Bernardo. Those two are in a class uh, on their own. They are fantastic. And I think without them, this film just it, it loses a lot of, of what makes it raw and powerful. George Shakiris is wonderful because he, he's the only one here who is, is doing it understated. He plays it very real and you can feel his, his anger, his rage, his frustration and that, that bitterness without him ever having to do much here. The intensity in his eyes is just very, very compelling, perfect for, for the cinema. And you know, there's that moment when he's introduced in the opening sequence, he does that three step turn and then he, you know, hits the wall and just, he doesn't do much here, but yet you can feel that rage just boiling and boiling underneath it, and it is quite intimidating. And surprisingly, his physicality, his dancing, matches the character so well. I think he's one of the best dancers of the bunch here. I, he's a very subtle dancer, but his movements are very sharp and very powerful. He's almost like a ninja. And because of that, there's something dynamic that comes from underneath it. And as I said, it is quite intim intimidating. It's kind of an extension of, of who he is and, and what he appears to be through the eyes. And then there's Anita, of course, the supporting role, also his lover in, in the film, the story. And she's, of course, this very rambunctious, very fiery character. And I think it's a very, very important part. You need somebody who is a real performer. And Rita Moreno is just that. She always was. I think she is absolutely wonderful in this. You can absolutely sense that she desperately wanted this role. And you cannot take your eyes off of her any time that she is on screen. It's just her charisma, her spice, her, her volatility. It's very strong. And with a role like this, it's so easy to cross that line and, and overplay it where you kind of find that disconnect. But I think she plays it just right. And I think why it works is because she can be really funny and very boisterous but you know when the film or with the story becomes more tragic she is just as convincing when she has to play it real and she has to be more emotional the attempted rape scene that's towards the, the almost at the very end of the film is one that when i was a kid really really affected me and a lot of it is because of how wonderful her performance is i mean it is really really great and i you can tell you know if you watch interviews with rita moreno she did say that that scene was very very difficult for her to shoot and you can just sense it that that a lot of that that rawness that emotion is not necessarily something that she's playing there's a bit of something that's real there too but yeah without those those two performances i don't think this film would have worked nearly as well i don't think it, the, the pathos of it would have been nearly as convincing yeah i think that natalie wood kind of gets there a little bit but not to the level of these two. The rest of the performances are very dated, unfortunately, and just very much a product of their era. And it stands out, but not, not in a good way. It's very hammy and over the top, and you might think, oh, but you know, this is a musical. So of course, that's, the, that's very typical. You want musicals to be very theatrical. And yeah, I, I can absolutely understand what you're talking about, but I think that that works more in a lot of the more MGM Gene Kelly, like American in Paris style musicals. And also when you watch somebody like Rita Moreno, of course she's being very theatrical, but when she's performing big, it still feels very authentic to her. Like everything that she's saying, it feels very, very real. You can sense that everything really means something to her and therefore it, it, it's more personal. She found the perfect balance. So there's that. And then there's also just the fact that this is, this is a story that is darker and it is an urban story. So it's going to be a bit more gritty and, and the themes are going to be darker than say, you know, a movie like Singing in the Rain. The big problem for me though is, is the, the, the main love story between Maria and Tony. I, I don't think that Richard Beamer and Natalie Wood work. Uh, when I was a kid, I bought into it. I was fine with it. But the older I get, I, I find it less and less convincing the more I return to it. I just don't think that they work together. And I don't, I've never found their love story very interesting, um, mainly because of the way that they play it. It's all very one note. It's melodramatic, like like that very, that, that love caricature. And their chemistry really isn't there. I know that in real life, the two did not get along very well at all. There was a lot of tension there because Natalie Wood wanted somebody else to play his part you know, whatever. And I'm not saying that by watching the movie, I can tell that they don't get along. I wouldn't have known that had, unless you told me. But once you know that information, it's kind of one of those 
Yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. It makes sense. Richard Beamer, who plays Tony, his performance is the one that really bothers me maybe the most. Uh, at least Natalie Wood gets her moment to shine later on in the film uh, in terms of the emotions. She becomes stronger and you see that inner strength as the film progresses, but I don't feel that from him. I, I, I kind of just want to slap him most of the time. I, I do not buy the idea that Tony would have ever fit in in a gang just because of his personality. Um, but he's supposed to be this person who's in a, a big gang and he's kind of sort of the leader of it along with his his best friend Riff. But to me that's really perplexing and I know that in the film for the most part he is in love so naturally you know you're gonna you're gonna become softer emotionally but I it's still completely un unconvincing to me. He just seems way too overly sensitive and whiny and I don't think that it's all of, of, of Beamer's fault actually. I, I think a lot of it was how he was directed because I watched uh, interviews with him where he has said, you know, I just wanted to play it more real. I didn't want to be so dramatic and, oh, I'm so in love, but that he kept being directed to do so. So he just kind of went further and further with it. And I actually think he's done uh, some really good work, especially in, in, in Twin Peaks by David Lynch. Also, um, Russ Tamblin is in that as well, both two actors from West Side Story, which is really interesting. But yeah, so there, I, I can't place all the blame on him. I do place some of it, actually a lot of it, on, on the director, Robert Weiss. Um, I don't know if he had the best instincts when it came to his actors. I've noticed that throughout his career. I know that this was his very first musical that he ever did, and then of course he went on to do Sound of Music later on. Um, but maybe that's why he just thought, oh, it's a musical, so I need to make this more theatrical and all of that. But um, I, I don't think it was necessary. He is a, a solid director and he's made some really great classics. But um, yeah, that was just something that I think was not one of his strengths. I look at a movie like this and I look at a lot of the other more uh, accessible Hollywood classics and I get why people loved them at the time. And I get why people still love them. And as I said, there are sequences in this film that I think are absolutely amazing. I mean, just like exceptional. Some of the best in, in American musicals. And I think it's effective when it really needs to be. But unfortunately, overall, it just, it, it doesn't age well in a consistent way. But of course, I still enjoy it like I do a lot of these these kinds of movies because number one, they're comfortable. And, and number two, they're just, they're really well done. And I think any fan of film should absolutely see this, especially if you're you're really into musicals. This is one that you, you can't miss if you haven't seen it. It's not perfect, but it, it, it has its moments. And as I said before, it's a, it's a very universal story, and I, I see this movie continuing to endure uh, for years to come. And that's my review. Thank you all for listening. All my social media information is below. You can watch more videos here, and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.